Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News Masters Madrid. The playoffs get back underway today. Lots of discussion. Who is the favourites going in? Sentinels versus Owls. Gingy versus Paper X. FNS believes that Sentinels, as it stands, are looking like the favourites for this tournament. They've beaten Loud the most recent time they played. Is that going to be enough though to take down the entire victory? Lots of talking point today. Very much interested to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Firstly, we've got to talk about challenges because that's now officially underway, certainly in the North American side. We also have this from Together We Are Terrific, the, uh, you know, very interestingly named Valorant team there in the challenger side. They officially confirmed, officially, it's pretty funny, it's not, doesn't really look like an official announcement, but um, this is what they say, that IC is gone. We believe that IC is going to um, the G2 guys, right, to replace Net, which opens the door to potential role changes. You know, there's been talk about Leaf going to the Sentinel, so IC can run the Duelist. I don't really know what G2 are cooking right now. I guess we'll see see as and when they confirm this one but a little bit strange to me and actually together we are terrific also confirmed that will is coming in to replace icy so pretty interesting stuff of course will formerly of 100t and elsewhere He's been looking to get his next opportunity back in, so hopefully that works out for him as well. But yeah, it's confirmed. IC is gone. We're pretty certain that he's going to G2, but I don't know if that's really going to be the best idea or not. I guess time will only tell whether that works out well in their favour. They are trying to stack some young talent. It makes a fair bit of sense. Now, Dapper didn't have the greatest time the other day in, of course, they played Oxygen up against Shopify or Moist Shopify in challenges. They lost that series quite comfortably. Yesterday, though, we had two more series. So, together we are Terrific, the team that IC just departed from took down QOR 2 to 1. This with Will as their new addition. He didn't play the greatest, but this, of course, is Kampeki and Neptune and those other guys, Mame, Pancakes, etc. And they get the win against QOR. That's XXIF. Names I'm sure you guys might be familiar with. Went 2 1 in the end. Breeze was 13 9 to them. Lotus went the other way and then bind 13 9 as well. 13 9 every map. How about that? The series people were looking forward to, though, really, was M80 versus TSM. This was uh, definitely a big game to see where M80 stand on paper going into the new season and M80 kind of crushed them. It wasn't absolutely dominant in the sense that both maps, it wasn't like Loud versus EDG the other day at Barcelona Madrid, for example. TSM looked pretty okay and I think to give them some time they can potentially be a contender. They're a pretty new team, TSM. They've only really just formed over the last couple of weeks or so. They only announced their team just yesterday or the day before. So now they're playing M80, arguably, probably should be, let's be honest, the best team in challenges. The guard, now G2, they won it last year. M80 are thinking, well, we no longer have the guard to worry about. We should be winning Ascension this year. And I think that is the mindset. And I think that's probably a justifiable mindset based on the situation, right? Even Toast said this right of DSG when DSG were an American North American challenger team before they've now partnered with Bleed and effectively have a team in the Pacific challenger side as their academy in some sense but that's what um, Toast said they're like well you know the guard can qualify through to Ascension then M80 will then another team will then it'll be our turn you know we'll get all the good teams out the way over the next couple of years then we'll be able to do it and uh, M80 might feel in a similar spot right so a 2-0 versus TSM game 1 was actually a 13 11 on the Lotus, the TSM pick, then the Icebox was very comfortable indeed. There's a couple of these players that I still don't really know why. I think especially Xander. Like, I've been expecting Xander to get signed into the league for a long time now. And it hasn't happened. So I'm a bit surprised on that. But obviously, um, yeah, Nitro is now on this team again, which is really cool to see. BCJ, Kawana, Noob, and then Xander and Nismo were the MVPs of this one. Nismo is obviously fantastic as well. But I think given the role that he plays and these other things, like I can kind of understand why he might be overlooked for some tier one spots. Xander, I thought, was for sure going to end up somewhere, but it hasn't happened yet. The thing is for M80 is like, even if somebody comes along and wants to make a roster change and says, hey, we want Nismo, we want Xander, M80 might say, you know what, we'd prefer to keep them because, you know, this is our ticket into the league and they like their current team. They're looking really good. Last year, it was an absolute brawl at the top of the league, really, between M80 and the guards. This year, there's no the guard. So there's Nismo says, could have been cleaner. Been a while. We've not played an official. They still get the relatively clean 2-0. So this is how it looks so far. Moist Chubba 5, of course, at 1-0. and Oxygen down at 1-1, in what, 0 and 1, 1 and 2 map count based on yesterday. And these are all the games that will be played over the coming days and weeks to determine the seedings for the respective groups as they go into promotion relegation, mid-season cup, and then round out who's going to qualify for the playoffs and ascension, etc, etc. The last remaining games in the groups coming up today, but uh, of course also today, is the rebuild 
beginning of Masters Madrid. Just to mention from Durka the other day who said this, want to change the ranking system maybe at VLR because based on the results, this is how it presently looks. And I know that they know, like the VLR guys, that this doesn't make any sense, but it's just funny to look at, isn't it? Like this is how things currently stack up in the respective regions. They've probably changed a little bit over the last couple of days, but... It doesn't really seem to have a good grasp on what to do between challenges teams or like ascension teams and pro league teams. And it doesn't also seem to consider anywhere near enough. Like if teams make a roster change that their relative strength will likely change and will need some shorter adjustment periods. Like just in, I mean, the EMEA is bad enough as well. <laughs> really, it's absolutely shocking. But even in the Americas, right, we've still got EG as the best team in the world. Loud aren't even here. Like no loud to be found. We've got Oxton, we've got Turtle Trip, we've got Boy Shopify, we've got the back outside boys as uh, better than plenty of the franchise teams. It doesn't make that much sense, but um, maybe they can resolve that one over time. These are also just some of the group stage schedules for VCT EMEA. I don't know if this has been officially confirmed until yesterday. I think they said there was a bit of a mistake on week five, so they've resolved that one. But all these other games should be accurate. But of course, we've got to talk about Masters Madrid. Some of these teams, well, all of these teams are not at Masters Madrid anymore. Because all of those teams got eliminated. It is simply two Pacific teams and two America's teams into the playoffs. Forsaken actually commented as well on his playstyle because we know that he's He's just so versatile, so creative, can run basically every agent. And uh, this is kind of what he says. That's the key factor that means I can become more flexible in my playstyle. But yeah, it's difficult for anybody on the planet to play Valorant quite the way that Forsaken plays Valorant. But I wanted to share a couple of clips here. Certainly this one from FNS on his predictions really going in to the playoffs. Who's going to win? It is so wide open. It is incredibly difficult to call who the favourites are for this event right now. But on paper, the team that's played the best Valorant, I would say so far, probably Sentinels. That's what FNS says. He believes they are the favourites. They've had a couple of days, of course, to prepare for this loud series. They've played each other a good couple of times over the last few weeks. Sentinels got the victory in the Grand Finals in the best of five back in the America's kickoffs. So on paper, they should be the favourites to do so again. But I'm sure Loud have learned from that series and if they were to win then it makes things very interesting certainly on the lower side so I think it's an absolute wide open tournament we kind of know that Gen G should be better than Paper X they showed that in the grand finals of their respective Pacific region which of course they were the two teams to qualify if Gen G were to beat Paper X and Sentinels were to beat Laos then we would have a game send Gen G which we really don't know how to call because we haven't seen these two teams play thank you Dr. Clown have you already done VCT Madrid predictions? Uh, no. I have no fucking idea who's going to win that tournament. I assume it's going to be Sentinels, but Paper X looks... All the teams in the playoffs look really good, so... Forever Iron Trash. Thanks, man. Yeah, Loud look like they're in max form as well. But the game is matchup-based. Like, you can destroy a team one day, and the next day, next day you could lose... So. Uh, so nonetheless, despite whatever happens in the playoffs, it has been quite the turnaround from Sentinels as a team, as an organization to go from where they were as kind of like the laughing stock in some sense of, especially during the Shroud days. I mean, I think that was pretty tragic in many ways. But even last year, they, you know, had a good team, but they didn't get anywhere near the success they were looking for. This year, they've made the changes. They've run it back. Of course, John QT comes through, run it back with part of their team. John QT, Zeltis coming in. They've clearly made some massive strides. So even if they end up top four, this tournament top three is not the end of the world. But of course, they'll want to win. There aren't too many better opportunities than this based on the way things stand. So these are the games today. Of course, today is the Thursday. The game will conclude on the Sunday with the grand finals. Today is as follows. So at the normal times, 8 a.m. Pacific time is when this kicks off, which is 4 p.m. Central European time in Madrid. Genji versus Paper X. Look, we've seen them play in the finals of the Pacific kickoff. Genji got the victory there 3-1, pretty emphatically actually. And Paper Rex have scraped through lots of their series. Now in this type of environment on land with the pressure on like this, I do think Paper X will play better. 
Are Genji still the favourites to me? Probably yes. And maybe a similar story with Sen Lao. But I think Lao are going to play some really good Valorant. It's going to take a lot, I think, for Sentinels to win this one. Whatever happens, however, we will get, thankfully, some actual cross-regional games there between either, you know, either Pacific team, either America's team in the upper and the lower brackets, which, of course, is going to happen tomorrow. And then you get the lower finals. Then you get the grand finals. And just a couple of stats here from Will Miner to mention on these respective teams. This is 10s versus Toys on their Omen. They obviously like playing the Omen, but they have different mentalities when it comes to how they play the agent. We can see here that like first blood success rates, be interested to know like first blood attempt rate on the Omen because that I think is where Tens really differentiates himself. He does have a higher kills per map than on the other side, higher ACS and higher first blood success as well. So this might be a key matchup to look at, but um, the 1v1 clutch win percentage isn't great for Tens, but the rest of his team usually do that job for him. And to be fair, he's not in too many 1v1s because usually he's getting involved in plenty of first engagements. These are some of the numbers as well in 2024 so far. Round win percentages. Loud actually have an incredibly good pistol win percentage, which might well be crucial here. But again, you look at these overall numbers, what often it comes down to is the individual matchup situation. Loud kind of took Sentinels to school in the very first series they played back at the kickoff. But as Sentinels came through the bracket, they went through the absolute grueler, they got the job done against Loud in the grand finals in the end. Wonder if we'll see a center tool in this series because Loud came out with that interesting composition. Sen had no counter for, but then, you know, you'd imagine they've been working pretty hard to figure out what to do in that circumstance. And of course, the first series is Paper X Gen G with similar numbers on either side. But very much interested your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time.